More enhancements are being done to the PlayStation Core. This time, we have a widescreen hack that will give you a wider field of view in 3D games. It doesn't work for all games, and it can cause glitches in games that it does work in. But it is a really cool feature that totally changes the way you play games when it works. Only 3D objects are set to widescreen. Any 2D objects and layers will be stretched. The developer received help on how to implement this from Laxer 3A, another FPGA PlayStation Core developer. It's great to see that information is being shared between devs. I created a video dedicated to this feature, so be sure to check it out. Also, last week I reported that a CPU data cache was added to the core. In addition to that, the core itself runs a little faster than an actual PlayStation. Dave's Game Room has a video demonstrating the difference between the core and a real PlayStation. An overclocking kernel is being developed for the Mr. Project. In the Mr. FPGA forums, user CoolBHO3K found a way to overclock the Cortex-A9 CPU cores that are on the DE10 Nano. Why would you want to overclock the CPU? Well, it will help with hybrid emulation efforts where some parts of a core would be implemented on the FPGA and others would be implemented in software on the Cortex-A9 CPUs. It will also slightly reduce game loading in some cores. Anything that is CPU bound should see speed improvements. MT32 emulation done on the DE10 Nano itself should work better with an overclock. The option to unclock to 400 megahertz will also be available, which will lower power requirements without affecting core performance much. This will not overclock the FPGA, just the ARM CPU. Always be aware that if you overclock a system, more power and heat will be produced. While the creator of this kernel believes that it won't harm the DE10 Nano, try this at your own risk. And if you do, make sure you have really good cooling. A beta core of the Konami GX400 Arcade hardware has been released. The only game supported now is Nemesis, which is a version of Gradius. The core must be manually installed, and you can download it from the project's GitHub. Other games that run on the hardware and might lead to future cores are Black Panther, City Bomber, Galactic Warriors, Gradius, Hypercrash, Konami GT, Nyan Nyan Panic, Salamander, and Twin B. Core developer Hotego has released a new beta core of the arcade game Road Fighter to his Patreon subscribers. Road Fighter is a top down racing game developed by Konami and released in 1984. It was Konami's first racing game and the goal of the game is to reach each stage's finish line before you run out of time. Otego also has some informative development posts on Twitter. In those posts, he describes an issue in a core that he's developing and how he will go about to solve it. Eventually, he figures out the problem and says that it had to do with undocumented test bits in the game. This goes to show that even if you have official documentation for a game or hardware, there are still idiosyncrasies, bugs, and undocumented features that developers have to figure out on their own. While browsing the Mr. FPGA forums, I found some developments on getting MIDI working on the NES core. There currently is a test core for the NES that allows you to connect a MIDI keyboard to your Mr. and play along to Nintendo music with the core's built-in NSF player. If this feature evolves any further, it would be great for chip tune musicians. It will make it possible for them to create NES music on a Mr. FPGA. Core developer Grey Rogue has a video on YouTube demonstrating the feature. The latest Mr. Stage event is now available in podcast form or on YouTube. The Mr. Stage events are audio interviews with members of the Mr. FPGA community. They are done on the Mr. FPGA Discord and are hosted by Artemio, the creator of the 240p test suite. This latest stage event features Alan SWX and Robert Pipe. Alan SWX has worked on cores such as the Apple II, Mac Plus, Arkanoi Arcade, and many, many more. Robert Pipe is the developer of the PlayStation Core, but he's also worked on the Game Boy Advance Core, added save states to cores, and many more developments. Are you holding off on getting an MT32 Pi? Well, an option that can help you wait is to use your Android phone as a MIDI module. Zalalalala's Attic Treats on YouTube demonstrates how you can use your Android phone to play MIDI music 
on games and cores that support external sound modules. This is possible by using the Fluid Synth app that you can download from the Google Play Store. Several games for older computers have the ability to give you enhanced music by connecting an external sound module. Mister added the ability to use these modules, but you're not limited to using the original ones. Projects like the MT32 Pi allow you to use a Raspberry Pi to emulate those sound modules. The Fluid Synth app will let your Android device emulate an external sound module, giving you another option. The music will play out of your Android phone, so it's recommended that you plug in some external speakers to it. Keep in mind that this is how those original sound modules worked. They output their sound independent of the computer, so you still have to connect speakers to them or plug the module into an available audio input port on a computer. For the full instructions on how to set up an Android phone with Mr. for MIDI music, check out the YouTube channel's pinned comment. And other cores getting miscellaneous fixes and updates are the arcade cores Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, Canyon Bomber, Dig Dug, and Dominoes have had their frameworks updated to support shadow masks and 256 phase 10 bit adaptive scan lines. The Centipede Cord has added high scores, fixed dip switches, and HDMI aspect ratio. The RX 7800 core added a video mixer and should handle the Mr. Scan Doubler now. And the Dig Dug Core added analog video flip, Verilator simulator support, and the framework has been updated. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and it's a bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.